Hello guys, I'm Rob. Welcome for another video on the Nasson restoration. Um, in this video I will show you some of the repairs from the damage we had at the Militrax 2022. Um, the sprocket was bent. Uh, I'll show you the straightening of the sprocket. The hub where the sprocket is uh, attached to. And also uh, wheel and some other bits and pieces. So yeah, I hope you enjoy the video. So at the moment uh, this part is already straightened as you could see. Um, I have three small cracks in it. Uh, this part was already repaired when we bought it. Uh, so it's cracked again at this spot. This is also a repair by the looks of it. I think yeah, this one also looks like an old repair. So yeah, the, the, the repair if you don't weld it with the correct steel it's a little bit weaker but yeah when you see how we hit it it's not strange even though we used uh, correct material for welding maybe not the best not the perfect material but yeah with the, the force this got hit it's not strange that it will crack along a weld because it will always be a weak spot yeah, there are certain circumstances that you can make a weld that strong uh, that it won't fail next to the weld uh, but yeah with very old material and then a new weld it's likely to happen uh, for this one there's a crack along here and I had to cut it to get uh, the ring off so I have to repair that straighten this and there's another wheel that has a little bend but the rubber is still in one piece and in order to repair it properly uh, we would uh, need to cut the rubber and that's of course a shame to do so that's what we're not going to do we leave it as is and this one we're going to repair so I'll do the grinding of camera uh, to keep the dust away from the camera itself so I made little v-notches for welding um, found a few more cracks at uh, new places so not old welds and uh, so I have six in total now and then this one already made a v-groove on this side have to heat it to bend it back in shape and also because it's high strength steel i'm gonna uh, make sure that uh, it's preheated so that the weld sticks better if it the harder steel is the more brittle it becomes and uh, if you weld it and it cools down fast then it can become too brittle so uh, when you preheat it then you prevent that and you can disperse the tension uh, a lot better it's all about the difference between the temperature of the weld and the material around it so if you lower that difference then it uh, is a lot better for this type of steel The crack that was in here also bent down now, so I have to push it back up, otherwise you have a bump inside and that's not good. So I had to open it up to make room for bending back. So this part is warm enough for welding. I'm also going to heat up this part at the same time because the small material, thin material, relatively thin, and I don't want to weld it completely and then the next because then it can distort more and gets hotter on the spot. So again uh, keeping that temperature difference down.
So that's it for the welding. I have to clean it up and then everything can be painted. Uh, this wheel should be ready any moment now so it can be pressed on and then this one can go back on the NASA one. This is also finished uh, when grinding and painting and then we can uh, reassemble the sprocket a bit the hub. Uh, we have to wait still for the shaft to be welded and yeah, when that is done then we can start reassembling everything. So at the Millitracks the prop shaft broke or one of the prop shafts, the left one, so we have to repair it. Um, I will do that by using a thicker tube so it's stronger. Uh, it was quite obvious that it failed because it was a little bit too weak. Uh, since you already could drive quite a bit, uh, it proves that uh, it's almost strong enough. Uh, but anyway, I could find this one. It has a movable joint, so it can take up vibrations a lot better. Uh, for that it's stronger, and this is a solid shaft, so that makes it also a bit stronger. I'm gonna make this one fit but also repair the other one so we have a spare shaft. So for this one I need to attach this coupler uh, on one side. Uh, it needs to have a flange on this side uh, to retain the bushing that connects the two uh, parts, the, the final drive, no, uh, sorry not the final drive but the differential and the prop shaft. Uh, it already has a flange, it's uh, a little bit on the long side, I want to make it as short as possible so that we have a little bit of movement in the coupler and I will turn this so that it will fit a bit better and then on the other side I need a larger flange so I will turn away this flange completely also to make it as short as possible or uh, I'll make the flange that it will sit over the flange but I have to see uh, to what extent I can use these holes and bolt it to it uh, otherwise I have to weld it and I'll rather bolt than it's uh, yeah, more secure. Uh, welding is secure enough but yeah, you can have some distortions, uh, you have to be more precise than with uh, bolting. So I'm going to make, uh, have to take these two flanges off. I will mark them to uh, which side it uh, originally was attached so we don't have any balance problems. Also going to use the center punch because the paint marker could come off. So I said for one part I need a flange and take a little bit material here and, then, and also of the height then have something to weld inside here and then for the other one I have to check the, the diameter for the bolts. If they go around this flange then I can make a flange larger that I can bolt this one to and then use the larger flange for bolting it uh, to the final drive. Check that first. So this is the part, uh, the, the shaft the final drive goes in here, then there's a bearing to support this part. And this will connect here. It will sit nicely within this uh, set of holes. So I can make a flange we'll with this countersunk in that flange to save space. Um, also have to look what kind of material I have. If it's easier to make like uh, like a shaft like on this part so that it will fit nicely in here that's easier to center maybe I will still weld it and cut this flange off to keep it as short and strong as possible um, but yeah if I have relatively thin material like this thickness 
Uh, this part is uh, exactly the same as the original part. Uh, it's a lot larger the flange because also the brake drum is attached uh, to here. So that's for the one side. Uh, the other side already explained how I'm gonna make it. So on this side we have the broken part. Have to replace the tube. And the part I'm almost sitting on is the inner part on the side wall with the bearing for the uh, bushing that supports. Uh, normally I have another bracket here with cooling system so that driving air uh, pulls the dust from the brakes away and you have the brake drum here. So we, because we're not using that system, uh, we don't need those brakes. We made a support. And I have to make sure I remember from last time welding these bushings on. After that I re-tapped them. But uh, there was a problem because of the heating. It gets a lot tougher the material. So we have to make sure that everything is working as it should before I weld something. I believe I made them uh, one size bigger because before it was only to hold uh, everything together was a uh, sturdy shaft, single piece. And now it's a flexible shaft. So I needed stronger bolts. Just, just to make sure this is still holding all the uh, torque forces, so this will not be on the bolts. But yeah, just to be sure I want to make a bit stronger. So I did weld this one around here, so that's possible. Ah, the gear don't go all the way to the side, so I have a bit more room. So the other one that I need to weld, I can weld it on two sides. If this weld is narrow enough, I can still weld here without having a lot of work uh, cleaning it up. Just, just have to make sure that everything fits afterwards. So that's one side. Take the other one off to check if everything is okay. And now I'm also sure I welded this one on the outside as well, looking at that one. And for the shaft on this side, it was uh, like the new coupler, the new shaft also with a flexible joint, the, like a sliding joint. And, but the flanges on this one were already big enough, so I only had to uh, change one side so that the, the FE uh, gear could be welded to it. Well, the bushing was a bit stuck, but yeah, I said this one is also welded on the outside perimeter. Sit nice flush. I have to clean this part up because I will also weld it on the inside, inside and outside. And I was thinking of turning this one down, but if I want to weld on the outside, I can't make it too thin because it has less strength that way. So I have to see if I can shorten the shaft in another way instead of turning this down. And also, clamping this down is not that easy.
So in order to uh, straighten the band tracks, I'm uh, going to make a tool. When you see it like this, you can see that the pins are not parallel, which they should be. Uh, this height I can't get the pin in by hand. It is going further, but uh, this only three holes, this four holes, so it's easier to get it on this side. I will make four blocks supporting the pin parallel to the, to the plate. And I can put something underneath this side and press this side down. Um, I need a heavy duty plate. I will clean that up, weld the blocks to it. And then uh, I'll have to see if I need to clamp this side down when I'm pressing this up that the plate doesn't lift up. But yeah, I'll have to see as I go uh, what I need to do. But first I make the four blocks. I have some good sized material. Can drill the holes in it for the pin. Can do that a bit oversize. So I need two blocks of 40 and two blocks of 64 about. 64 exactly. So I'll make it a little bit shorter, 63. And then drill the holes. So I have the four blocks. And the idea is to drill a hole in it. And weld them in place like this, but of course so that this will be supported and only by the pin and not by the track itself. And then I can push this down to straighten it. And I can put, uh, because you always have a little bit of spring back, I'll put some extra material on this side underneath. And I think, yeah, when you push this can come up a bit, but in the end when it touches, yeah, there shouldn't be a much difference, but I can always clamp this down. So yeah, next part is making the holes. I want to make it oversize so that the pin goes in easily. 21. Yeah. So I'll take one size bigger. And I said I want to get it as close as possible to the edge. But still about 5 mm shy. So let's go 16. So now drilling. Of course uh, having a separate part and having to line up is more difficult. But since I can get a big hole with a lot of play, that's not a problem at all. Otherwise if it has to be very precise you weld it and then uh, make the hole a little bit bigger to the correct size. And then everything is in line. But of course you have to have a long drill, it's more difficult. So finishing these holes with the mag drill but this is a bit loose. So it would be better to have a clamp on the workbench itself, but yeah, for now it works, so we'll have to do with this. So now I can press. Um, I have to see if I press only here on the outside or on different places because I think when I only press on this side I might bend this down but did not as far so it's uh, warped. So I have to see what the best thing is to do but yeah we'll find it out when doing it. I'm gonna probably take a few shim plates put it on the ends so uh, because you have spring back 
it always brings a better back uh, to the previous position so we'll have to see what happens So I finished this wheel as far as welding is going and grinding, cleaned up very nicely, still have to clean it up and paint these parts, this will stay uh, clean because the wheel will be pressed on, rubber is also back so hopefully tomorrow I can press the rubber on and then this weekend install the wheel again. Some more parts for the prop shaft in the background where the, these plates came from and in front is the uh, original part uh, which houses uh, the brake drum and on the inside there's a bearing uh, that supports it and it uh, is attached to the drive shaft that broke and these are the two prop shafts uh, the two prop shaft halves that broke you can see the twist so we need to replace that tube and then the one in the background is the, the one that's going in and then the, the original one as a spare. It's not original to the tank but the one we made at first. So this is the main hub. We did some straightening at this end so we're also going to clean it and then the, the gears uh, can go back on. And this is one of the gears that was also bent and uh, also cracked few cracks uh, that were already welded and cracked again in the middle of the weld so it was a, so it was a strong weld. Uh, only thing is uh, cleaning up, painting and then assemble it again. I'm not going to